Hello, welcome to this video on vector functions. It's our second video where we're going to look at some differentiation rules and some consequences behind um, taking the derivative and seeing its connection to the function. These derivative rules should look familiar, but instead of being on regular functions, they're now on vector functions. The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. The derivative of a scaled vector function, you can pull the scalar out and take the derivative on the function. All right, this next one's a little complicated. It's a scalar, but it's a function scalar. So it's like a product of two functions, okay? The outside function is just a regular old formula on t, and the inside function is a vector function. These two guys multiply by each other, I mean. Derivative of a product is the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's a scaled vector there, but it's scaled by a function. All right. Divide dot product between two vectors. We're going to take the derivative of that. It's a product. Product rule. Derivative of the first time, dot the second plus the first dot the derivative of the second. What about the cross product? Same. Derivative of the first cross the second plus the first cross the derivative of the second. Product rule. And then lastly, we have the chain rule, a function inside of another function. Derivative of the outside, evaluated at the inside, then multiplied by the derivative of the inside. All these rules apply, but now they're applying to vector functions. Here's an interesting uh, concept. We're going to prove it. If you have your magnitude of your position vector constant, then it will be the case that your position vector is orthogonal to your velocity vector for all time t. We're going to prove it. Now, how can you prove two vectors are orthogonal? You're going to look at their dot product and show that it is zero. Okay. All right, great. Constant magnitude. What does that mean for us? Well, if you take the derivative of the magnitude, you should get zero. Derivative of a constant should be zero. What's the formula for the magnitude of a position function? What's the function? What's the formula? How do you do magnitude anyway? Take each component. Square it, add them up, take a square root. Okay, great. Um, but here, though, um, the we also have the fact that the magnitude of the vector squared is equal to the vector dotted with itself. And so... The magnitude of the vector is equal to the square root of the dot product with itself. Let's use that. Let's take the derivative on that and show that if it is zero, we can say something about the two vectors. Okay. So the derivative of the square root of the dot, Well, square root of anything is 1 over 2 square roots of that same thing. Then you take the derivative of the inside. Well, it's a dot. We just saw the, we just saw the, uh, why does it say chain rule? Oh, I'm sorry. We're executing the chain rule. Derivative of the outside at the inside, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's why it says chain rule. I was thinking it should say product rule, but here comes the product rule here. The derivative of this product, um, is going to be equal to using the um, derivative of the first dotted with the second plus the first dotted with the derivative of the second. I um, don't know how this is necessary, really. We can leave that apart alone, I guess. Let's focus on executing the formula for, which was the product rule on that. And so. What happens when you have r prime dot r and r time r dot r prime? You 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 have two of them, and those guys cancel out. Okay, great. Well, the derivative of the square root of a vector function dotted with itself is equal to the dot product of that vector function with its velocity, all divided by the magnitude of the position function. And if that's supposed to be equal to zero, then what does that say? A fraction is equal to zero. If the denominator is not zero, it has to be the numerator is equal to zero. So there we have it. 
the dot product between these two vectors must be zero if you had a zero derivative and that zero derivative comes from the fact that you were uh, equal to a constant. All right, great. We're going to use this later, so keep it keep in mind. Constant value of the magnitude leads to the magnet. Uh, the regular function, position function, is being orthogonal to the vector uh, to the velocity function. Okay, great. Here's an example of, of one where it's the position function for our helix. Its magnitude is not constant. If you go look at its magnitude, you get cosine squared plus sine squared plus t squared out on a for radical, and that's um, that's one plus t squared. But if you look at the velocity though, negative sine t is the derivative of the cosine. Cosine t is the derivative of the sine. T is the derivative is one. If you look at the velocity and you look at its magnitude, sine squared plus cosine squared now plus one, you get you get the square root of two. And that's a constant. So according to this, when you have some function who has a constant magnitude, then its derivative and itself are orthogonal to each other. Okay. So the velocity vector for the helix is orthogonal to its derivative, which is the acceleration vector. As you're traveling along that helix, your velocity and acceleration vector will always be orthogonal. Uh, I should go back to the visual for that. Ah. Okay. Um, the velocity vector comes off tangent. Uh -oh. No? Okay. Ah, it's frozen. It's all right. Oh, wait, there we go, there we go. Uh, okay. Um, the velocity vector comes off tangent, and it'll be orthogonal to the acceleration vector. The acceleration vector is always going to point on the inside. Centripetal force. All right, great. All right, one more thing. We're almost done here. Okay, um, if you have a vector function r with its and it has a second derivative, it turns out that the cross product between the velocity function and the position function is the same thing as the cross product. I'm sorry, the derivative of the cross product of velocity and position is equal to the cross product between acceleration and position. Kind of crazy. Let's check it out. All right. Left hand side. Derivative of a product, use the product rule. Derivative first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, but times means cross product. What happens when you cross a vector with itself? You get zero. Okay. So we leave that part. We have exactly what we're trying to prove. The derivative of the acceleration cross with the position is equal to the cross product with, of position with acceleration. Yeah. All right, great. So to finish off here, if you have a function, a vector function, and you have two points, we can have the vector that goes from the origin to the one point, that's your position function. The vector that goes from the origin to the next point, that is change time a little bit, t plus h. We connect them with the subtraction and divide by h to scale it. And what we have then is exactly going to be the derivative vector, the tangent vector. As as p approaches q, h will go to zero. Uh, q will, q will approach p, and the red vector becomes the the purple vector. The limit of the secant vectors is the tangent vector. We're going to find it's going to be useful to get the unit tangent vector, and then so that'll be velocity divided by speed. The magnitude of velocity is speed. All right, let's end the video here. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. And uh, comment down below, like, and subscribe. Ask me any questions if you like help. I'll see you in the next video.